Do you know what my favorite commercial is? The one with the Hershey Kisses where they're all like the little, you know, the little instrument. Oh yeah, I got you. Yeah. yeah. Hey, for First News, I'm Micah. I'm Chris. And uh, you've got a great thing coming up. Uh, for If you are a parent or a grandparent or an aunt or uncle of a first through sixth grader, you've got a great deal for Yeah, you. upper basketball. We're looking for boys and girls, first through sixth grade, to register. And uh, I'll have a table set up if you want to sign up your kids for upward basketball. Come by there. They can scan a QR code. Everything's done online. Perfect. They can go to our website uh, and check it out there under Recreation Ministry. Awesome. And so, also, we're looking for 32 individuals if we fill all our teams up that will help either coach. I would love for all the coaches to come from our church or at least one person tied to that team that will help with leading devotions. Uh, yeah. for that and be able just to present the gospel at each practice uh, that okay. goes with that. Because upward basketball is about teaching skills, yeah. but also teaching the word and letting them know about Christ. Man, you know what? I, uh, I've i done some upper, upper coaching for us the last couple of years, and that's my favorite part is that devotional part. So, man, we could really use your help. It's just 32 people. We would love to have you out there. 31 now. 31. So. All right. Uh, what? What are those? My scissors. Why do you have scissors in your pocket? Because October 3rd at 3 o'clock, we're having the ribbon cutting for the bell tower, and I got my scissors. No. I'm ready to cut the ribbon. No, it's... It, you're, cut the ribbon. You're not... No. Put these down. Why? Chris, you're not cutting the ribbon. There's, there's one person, and it's not going to be you, buddy. How do you know that? I just trust my... I'm going to put it in my pocket just in case. Do not put What if they show pocket. up without any scissors at all? That is so dangerous. So October 3rd, 3 p.m., on the front line, we will have our ribbon cutting for the bell tower. Lloyd will be playing. You won't want to miss it. And you won't need to bring your own scissors. In fact, please, don't walk around. Don't put scissors in your pockets. So hey, for dangerous. First News, I'm Chris. I'll see you at the bell tower ribbon cutting. And I'm Micah. Give me, the, give me those. Thank, thank you. I'm taking them over here. It's okay. It's okay. <sighs> I don't know, y'all. I try and I try. But, uh, hey, good morning. We are so thankful for everybody here with us today, whether you are here in this room in person or you're watching us online. Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining with us in worship. If you are a visitor with us, or maybe it's your first time in a long time, we would like to say welcome home. And if you wouldn't mind, uh, in the pew in front of you, there is a yellow card, looks just like this. If you will grab that, fill that out, and if you will take it all the way down to the nursery, there's a blue wall. Uh, we'll have someone standing right there. We've got a gift for you. I promise we're not gonna call you about solar panels or car warranty or any Anything like that we just want to know how we can pray for you um, and if you're watching us online if you wouldn't mind send us a message through our Facebook chat just again to let us know that you're here with us today um, it is going to be a wonderful week I'm so glad that we are getting it started off right with worship so let's pray and then we'll prepare our hearts to worship our risen King Heavenly Father you are good we love you and we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for this, this nice, cool weather you've blessed us with. Lord, we love that so much. Thank you so much for the opportunity for us to gather together um, in your word and with other believers. We love you and it's in your name we pray. Amen. Let's worship.
Hope that you'll stand with us this morning as we've been called to worship by this beautiful music about our shepherd. And now we sing our praise this morning to the Lord on high. Rejoice as we sing together. Coming like turtles. All right. I got a question for you. Were you, this is a loaded question, were you born knowing everything? No. Oh, good job. Good answer. Uh, what was it, Jackson, what was it that you needed help to learn how to do? I forgot. You forgot? It was six years. I know. I'm already six years. I know you're six, but what is it that you needed help learning to do? What about this? Did you know how to tie your shoes when you were born? No, I mean, I still don't. 
You still don't. Velcro, I know. Velcro is a blessing and a curse. Um, I know, Velcro works well, and so do boots, don't they, Brent? Because you don't have to tie those crazy ties. It, when you're in kindergarten Sunday school, Mr. Tommy, he is the one that taught my son. He taught Sean how to tie his shoes in kindergarten Sunday school. Crazy, right? Learning about the Bible and learning how to tie shoes. All right. Those were Sean's shoes a long time ago. Sean's shoes are a lot bigger now. Okay, what about baseball? Were some of y'all born throwing the ball? You don't even play baseball that much? Well, what about soccer? Were you born knowing how to kick that ball into the goal? No, who helped you learn? Your mom? What about your coach? You didn't have a coach, okay. Well, you're in, I know you're on a team, Jackson. Yeah. Now you have a coach. Okay. All right. What about this one? Uh, did, were you born knowing how to read? No. No. Who helped you learn how to read? Um, nobody really. Nobody? You just figured it out. You opened the book and you looked at the words and you figured it out. <laughs> Thank you, Brent. It's a teacher. I know my <laughs> right, but you didn't know how to read when you were one year old. It was your teacher that taught you how to read when you got bigger. Okay, so I want to talk to you today about Peter needing a helping hand. He wasn't quite sure how to do something. So Jesus had fed the 5,000. So what did he use to feed them? Do you remember? What did, was it that he had? Do you remember? He had uh, two fish and, uh, and loaves of bread, one kid's lunch. He turned one kid's lunch into, into uh, to enough food to feed 5,000. There was 12 baskets of leftovers. Excellent, Bryn. Thank you. So that is exactly right. So Jesus took that one little lunch box and made it feed 5,000 thousand people and they even had food left over way more food than what they even started with so Jesus had had a tiring day he had been teaching people talking to people telling them about telling them about God and then he wasn't done he wanted to talk to God and be alone so he went alone and he prayed for a while and he sent the disciples on into the water and they said I'll catch up to you later it's kind of hard to catch up when he doesn't have a boat, but you know how Jesus caught up to him? He walked on the water out to them. Well, when he did, the waves were kind of crazy and the disciples couldn't see who that was because they're not used to people walking on the water. That's kind of scary, right? And they said, it's a ghost. But Jesus said, no, it's me, it's me. And then, Peter said, let me put my glasses on because the words are getting smaller and smaller in my Bible. Oh, good enough. <laughs> it is. Okay, so Peter said, Lord, if it's you, tell me to come to you on the water. And Jesus said, well, come on, come see me. And Peter got down out of the boat, he walked on the water and he came toward Jesus. But he saw the wind, he got scared, and then he started sinking and he cried out, Lord, save me. So Jesus reached out his hand and he caught him. And he said, you have little faith. Why did you doubt? Because you know what? Jesus had him the whole time. He was taking care of him the whole time. He was there to help him if he just kept his eyes on Jesus and just focused on him and didn't start worrying about everything else going on around him. We forget about that sometimes, that Jesus is with us at all times. We have other people in this world that are here to help us too, but Jesus is always by our side and always ready to help us learn and do new things, right? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day you've given us. Thank you that we get to come together to worship and learn more about you. Help us to have our ears open. Help us to... Um, always focus on you and remember that you're with us there to help us 
and that you're grabbing us and ready to save us when we just ask. In your precious and holy name we pray. Amen. sing together. as we sing this beautiful song of praise this morning. The Lord, our strength. Oh, the Lord, our strength and song, highest praise to Him belongs. Christ the Lord, our conquering King, your name we raise, your triumph sing. Oh, praise the Lord.
It's good to see everybody here. Seems like it's been forever. It's so good to see y'all smiling faces. Will you join me in, in community prayer? Dear Lord, we thank you for this day for all the wonderful blessings you've given us, all the wonderful experiences, the joys, the triumphs, the valleys, the peaks. All through it, you've been with us. We ask that we take this time to recognize all those wonderful blessings and the time you've spent with us, that we right-size our doubts and our fears proportionately to your strength and power and the blessings you've given us. We ask that you bless these tithes and offerings that we give back to you, to use them, that we use them in a manner glorious to you. We ask this in your son's precious name, amen.
Let's pray together. This morning, Lord Jesus, we lift our hearts together in singing Alleluia to you. It is because of you and your sacrifice, your love for us that we can be here today. Remind us that it is right and it is good to be connected to your family. It is right and good to be together, whether that be here in person or online joining us to be connected. Father, we, we can't do this alone. We can't walk this journey alone. If it were not for you, for your spirit living within us, it, this would not be possible. But we also know that you have called us to do this together in community. And so today I pray that you would remind us that there is such power in being together, to being unified, unified around your calling of us. We as your children called to make disciples to share the good news of what you have done for us. Strengthen us in that, grow us in that. We pray these things in your name, amen. As Micah prayed earlier, we are thankful for the cooler temperatures. But I will tell you that with the Incoming of the cold front also came a lot of stuff that I'm dealing with up here. And so I appreciate your patience if I have to clear my throat several times as we make it through this morning. I've had allergies wherever I live. They're just different in every place that I've lived in. And so that's been the experience here as well. We began a, a series really two weeks ago talking about this idea of, of connections, of real connections, real relationships. And it's really uh, been a continuation of the emphasis on unity that we've been talking about really for over a month. The importance of us as the family of God to be unified around the purpose that he has called us to fulfill. That purpose is to be disciples who make It's gonna be a long morning. <laughs> the purpose is for us to be disciples who make disciples. Disciples who make disciples and we are to be unified in that and, and I've shared with you the importance of understanding what the church is really about. We talked about this a couple of weeks ago that the church is not a club, it's not a set of programs, it's, it's the people, it's us. And the church is called for specific purposes and that main purpose is to fulfill God's mission which is the redemption of humanity the making of disciples Jesus gave us those marching orders the great commission not the great suggestion the great commission go and make disciples teaching them all things that that I've taught you baptizing them in the name of the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit and then he says don't ever forget I will be, be with you every step of the way, even to the end of the earth. That's what he's called us to do. And we're to do that together as a family, as a church. And so last week we talked about the power of relationships, the power to bring unity, but also if we're not careful, if we don't manage those relationships, the power to divide. And so we have to stay on top of that and we have to remember that we are called to follow Jesus and we are called to do that together. We do that best together. So today I wanna wrap up uh, this series and then next week, let me just uh, throw this out there really quickly. Next week we will celebrate the table. Next week we will do uh, uh, communion together. We will take communion together and we thought that would be a wonderful way to kind of wrap up this idea of family, this idea of being connected. And so next week, don't miss next week, we'll be celebrating communion at the table together. So as we wrap up though today, this series, 
I want us to think about, we've talked about what the church is, what it isn't, and the power of these relationships. And so today I want us to focus on how do we move forward in that? If we realize and if we truly believe that the church is God's family, God's children, and that we are the people that God has called us to be and we're to do this together, and that there's power when we do this together, then how do we move forward? What what avenue do we take? And, I, and I'll just let the cat out of the bad bag right now. It's small group Bible studies. It's small group Bible studies. We can call it Sunday school. We can call it Bible study. But it's getting together in a smaller group. One of the things that the pandemic has shown us is the shallowness of our connections, the shallowness of our relationships. Now, I realize, and I said this a couple weeks ago, I realize I'm kind of preaching to the choir, so to speak, here. You're here, but it's so easy for us to fall away if we're not connected. It's so easy for us when we get uh, into a bind, when, when things start happening, it's easy for us to, to get comfortable, comfortably disengaged, when we don't have those connections, those real meaningful relationships. And so I want us to think about how do we do that? And I've shared this with you before, so I apologize if you've heard it more than 15 times. But if you're not involved in a Bible study, if you're not involved in a smaller group, you're not going to build those relationships. You all know that I take attendance in here mentally because I know where you sit every week, correct? We've had this discussion. In fact, I was told this morning, I'm in my spot so you'll know where I, where I, that I'm here. And so if we take that and we think about that, each of you are pretty much in the same 10 foot square area that you always are. And if you only come to an hour worship service every few weeks, which as I've told you before, the national average is for most people to think of, of themselves as a regular church attender is two out of six Sundays. That's a whole other sermon for another day. That shouldn't be. But if you only come, say you came three or four Sundays, you're still going to sit pretty much in the same spot. And if you sit pretty much in the same spot, the people around you are doing the same thing. And so you might get to know over the course of 10 years the name of the person that's sitting around you. But that's about all you're going to get to know because we don't spend time in this setting to get to know one another to really pour into one another. Now, I hope and pray that during the, the time before the service that you're interacting, that, that's important. But the point I'm trying to make is if you're not involved in a smaller group, if you're not involved doing life together in a smaller group, then you're not building these relationships. And the family is about relationships. So for us, the way that we move forward is being involved in a smaller group. When I first got here, I asked the staff, do we call it Sunday school or we call it Bible study? Now, I hold the fact that we voted as a staff that we would call it Bible study, but yet it is inevitable that every week one of our staff members calls it Sunday school. Let me just go on record right now. I don't care what we call it. I just care that we do it. That we are involved in those kinds of relationships. As we think about it, our text that we've been working through, Acts chapter 2, you can go ahead and turn there. Acts chapter 2 gives us a picture of what that first group of believers, those early believers experienced and what they did. And it sounds a whole lot like small group Bible study to me. So as you're turning there, let me just remind you the importance of these relationships. We were created for these relationships. I don't think it's a stretch to take what is recorded in Genesis chapter 1 to mean that we are to be connected. I've heard it used, this text used several times, verse 27, to talk about marriage. But in this account of God creating the world and creating mankind, we are told, so God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. I've, as I said, I've heard that used to talk about marriage, but I think it's also talking about connection. And what I want to point out there is we are most fully God's image when we are together. 
God created us for relationship. Andy Stanley in his book, Creating Community, says God has a dream for us and it includes authentic community leading to real spiritual growth. Jesus prayed for it. It's what we all need and it's what the unbelieving world longs to see. We were created with this profound need for community, for relationships. And so we see that in this first group of believers. Acts chapter two, beginning in verse 42. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe and many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common, selling their possessions and goods they gave to anyone as he had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Those first believers, as we talked about the last couple of weeks, these were folks that had given themselves, given them their, their lives to follow Jesus. And for many of them, if not most of them, that meant a change altogether. It meant a break from their families. It meant a break from possibly their jobs, their careers, a break from the, the positions they held within their culture, their society. They were all alone in this, so they needed one another, and so they gathered, it says, daily. They were together daily. We've talked about this three times in this text. It uses the word together. They were together. But what were they doing? When they gathered together, what were they doing? It says that they devoted themselves. They didn't just casually look into this. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. So I want us to think about those things. Again, as I said, when you think about it in that context, that sounds a whole lot like Bible study to me, a whole lot like Sunday school. As I said, I don't care what we call it. It's just important that we do it. So what did they do? It says they began with this devotion to the apostles' teachings. These connections were built on God's word. When this happened, this was shortly after Jesus ascended shortly after the Spirit came and Peter began to preach. And so this is very early on in these believers coming together. And so at that point in time, there wasn't a New Testament written. At that point in time, we had the apostles who had witnessed Jesus' teachings, had witnessed Jesus' miracles and his signs and wonders, and they were teaching these believers. Now think about that. They just committed their lives to follow Jesus. They're going to want to know what it means to follow Jesus. What did Jesus teach? What did he expect from us? What do we do? And so they devoted themselves to studying and listening and learning from the apostles' teachings. For us, that's this word. Those teachings were written down eventually and that became our New Testament. So for us as believers, we should have this same devotion to this word, to studying. Now, as I said a moment ago, when we come into this room, this is not the place that we dig in and study necessarily like you will in a smaller group. When you can discuss it, when you can look deeply into each word, so you need to be in these smaller groups learning what this says, devoted to his teachings. This devotion to Jesus' teachings brought about transformation. It changed them. They began to, to grow. They, they learned. They loved. It says that they were willing to sell their possessions and goods to, to provide for anyone in the group that had needs. This changed them this devotion to the apostles' teachings, to God's word. The teachings of Jesus serve as this common ground. What do we believe? We talked about this a couple of weeks ago. It's, it's one thing to say we are Baptists, or maybe even to say we're Christians, and we can all fall under that one big umbrella, but so often we get hung up on disagreements about certain doctrines. 
But if we will focus on the main things and keep the main things the main thing, then we won't have these disagreements. And we've talked about what those main things are. There is one God, Father, Son, and Spirit. He sent His one and only begotten Son to earth to teach us what it means to follow God, to teach us how to love. He showed us how to love by dying on a cross for us. And three days later, he rose again, defeating death, defeating sin. And he offers through grace, through our trust and belief in him, salvation. Those are the things we agree on. Those are the things we hold to. And when we understand those teachings, when we dedicate ourselves, devote ourselves to those teachings, it unifies us. Why? Because we have common ground, a foundation that we build this family on, that God builds this family on. Each one of these people were committed and devoted to what Jesus taught. We need to be the same. It's still true today. As Jesus followers, we need to know what Jesus taught. We need to learn and study his teaching so that we can live a life that honors him. And we need each other in the midst of this. We learn best when we learn together. It starts with his word. God's word is the foundation for healthy relationships. It says that they were devoted to the apostles' teachings. It also says they were devoted to fellowship. When I say fellowship, when I use the word fellowship, in our context, what does that normally mean? What's that? Party, party, party. And where there's a party and there's Baptist, there's what? Food, food. That's what we think of when we hear this. We think they devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings and to partying with food. I'm not exactly sure that's what was meant here. Although it does say that they devoted themselves to breaking bread together. And each day they were together in the temple courts. And they also did what? Ate in each other's homes. They spent time together. The word here isn't party. Although that's not a bad thing. Let me just stop there and just for a second. Sometimes as believers, it's okay to have a good time. Just do so with your head. You know, think about it. It's good to be together. It's good to enjoy being together. But the word here is koinonia. Koinonia. Which, if you look at the definition of koinonia, does mean fellowship. But it means something so much deeper. Partnership. Sharing in. Contribution to. Close mutual relationship. That's what the word means. So when it says that they were devoted to the apostles' teachings and to fellowship, they were devoted to a mutual relationship, a partnership. They were in this together. And so for us, we need to understand that's so important for us today as well. If you haven't noticed, we live in a world that is not overly cordial to Christians. We live in a world, and it's becoming more and more this way, that we are no longer seen as helpful, but suspicious. We're seen as dogmatic. We're seen as haters, or you just put a name on it. We live in a culture that is not only post-Christian, it is post-truth. And so when someone stands for the truth, it is not a popular thing. And so we need one another. This relationship, this partnership, we are in this together. That's what these folks experienced. I find it interesting that Luke, of all the things he could describe, and and I'm not suggesting that the only thing, four things that that the first believers, the early believers did are listed here. I'm sure they did more than just uh, study and and fellowship and uh, eat together and pray together. But I do find it interesting that these are the four that Luke decided and was inspired to list. I I think that's important. I don't think that's by accident. And so we do need to put a priority on studying God's word. We need to put a priority on these relationships of fellowship, being together, doing life together. It's much more than a party, it's a partnership. We're in this together. 
They were committed to this, doing life together, spending time together. You know, it's really hard to get to know someone, really know someone, if you never spend time with them. I would go so far to say it's impossible. It's impossible to really know we had the opportunity this past week, the staff got away to, to somewhat uh, onboard Stephen and, and get him acclimated to our team. Uh, one of the things that the personnel committee did uh, such a great job with and really made a priority was not just finding someone who could do the job, but someone who would fit our team as well. And so this week we had an opportunity just to spend some time together away from the building and just get to know one another. And I will tell you, I've been here six years, I learned some things about each of our staff through them telling their stories. That's so important to share your story with someone else and to hear someone else's story. And you can't do that if you don't spend time together. And it's really hard for the 300 of us in this room to spend time with each other every week. But you can do that in a smaller group. It's so important to be part of someone else's life and to have others be a part of yours as well. You, you will never build lasting, meaningful relationships if all you do is sit in this service. It's so important to be in this smaller group, a, an environment that promotes digging into God's word, an environment that promotes partnership, meaningful, deep, life-giving relationships. Time and fellowship strengthens relationships and honors the Father. And then the third thing that I would point out is they were unified and solidified in prayer. They were devoted to the apostles' teachings, to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Being a part of this group, these early believers were unified because they joined their hearts in prayer. They prayed for one another. They prayed for the Father to teach them. They prayed together. We talked about this a few weeks ago. Jesus prayed for our unity. And we find that these believers were unified because they prayed together. And so that's another component of meeting together in these smaller groups. We pray together. We pray for one another. If we know one another, we know one another's needs. We rejoice when someone celebrates and we are sad when someone else suffers. And we pray for one another. This praying for one another, I suggest to you, will unify us even more than anything else we could do together. Jesus said the world will know that we are his disciples by the way that we love. And nothing shows our love for one another more than when we pray for one another and when we pray together. Francis Schaeffer, in his work, The Mark of a Christian, says, our oneness in relationship with each other is the final apologetic. Jesus prayed that we would be one. When we pray together, when we come together, when we study his word together, it unifies us. Hearts are unified when they come together in prayer. So where do we go from here? Where's the path forward? Well, as I've said at the beginning, it's getting involved in a smaller group. Be part of a small group that is crucial to your spiritual health and to the health of this family. A healthy small group must be built on studying God's word, devoting ourselves to God's word, also in spending time together in fellowship, in partnership, in relationship, and praying together. That's our path forward. That's really who we are as First Baptist Church Corpus Christi. We are a group that is gathered together, and we grow when we do this in smaller groups together. We grow in our own understanding, and as we talked about several weeks ago, when we grow closer to God, we grow closer to one another, and it happens best when we do this together. And so, our path forward is that we need to be re-engaged in small groups, whether that be online with a Bible study or in person. Be engaged in smaller groups, in Sunday school or Bible study, whatever you want to call it. God will be glorified when we grow, and we grow best when we devote ourselves to these things. The study of his word, 
the fellowship, the breaking of bread together in prayer. So my challenge for us this morning is renew your commitment to connect through small group Bible study. God will be glorified and we will grow. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you for giving us this picture of what those early believers did and the way that they made it through the difficult times that they faced. Lord, we face difficult times as well, so I pray that you would remind us that we do this best together, that we need to devote ourselves to your word. We need to devote ourselves to fellowship with one another, partnerships with one another. We need to devote ourselves to being together and praying together. And when we do that, you're glorified. And this family becomes more and more what you want us to be. Disciples who come together to make disciples. Find us faithful in that today. In Jesus' name, amen. In just a moment, I'll have you stand for a time of response. Uh, Stephen will be here. Chris will be here. If you'd like prayer, if there's a decision that needs to be made, we'll be here. But today, just focus on the fact that it is so important to connect with one another. God is glorified when we connect with one another, and that happens best in smaller groups. So I would suggest and, and, and challenge you to open your heart to God and say, God, inspire me to be part of that. And maybe you already are. Most of you, as I look around the room, nearly all of you already are part of a smaller group. But may today you be reminded of the importance of being part of that group and offer praise to him because of it. Let's stand and sing together as we respond. I am weak, but thou art strong. Jesus, keep me from all wrong. I'll be satisfied as long as I walk. Let me walk close to thee. Child. Now we will dismiss to go where? Very good. Very good. Yes. Uh, but as we are dismissed, don't forget next Sunday, we will celebrate communion together in both services. And also next Sunday, we have a ribbon cutting. We only need one pair of scissors. Chris has those, I guess. But I encourage you to be part of that next Sunday at 3. Uh, right out here on the front lawn, Lloyd will we'll play a few songs. We'll have uh, some words spoken, not a lot. You're not coming to hear anybody speak, but hear the bells. So uh, we'll do that next Sunday at 3, and so just be aware of that. As we are dismissed to go to Bible study, may the God who created us for meaningful, deep, life-giving relationships strengthen those relationships each and every day as we do life together. Amen. We're dismissed.